In my experience with M. Night Shyamalan movies, they are either great or complete garbage and there's really nothing in between. That's what makes him the most frustratingly inconsistent director in Hollywood. Because we've already seen that he can do great things when he is locked in. But for every sixth sense, there's a happening. For every unbreakable, there's a lady in the water. And for every split, there's a glass. So my question has always been, when will M. Night Shyamalan find a middle ground? When will he become more consistent? Well, today we're going to look at his newest movie, Knock at the Cabin, and find out. Let's discuss. I watch so you don't have to. Before I get started, I'd like to kindly ask that you hit the like button, and please subscribe to the channel for more content just like this. Come on. Do it. Do it! When vacationing at a remote cabin in the woods, a young girl and her two fathers are taken hostage by four armed strangers who demand that they make a difficult choice to prevent the end of the world. We all know that M. Night has always been about these high concept ideas that usually relies on a twist of some kind that either blows your mind or completely ruins the movie for you. Every M. Night movie is a sink or swim scenario. But one good thing I will say about Knock at the Cabin is it does take a somewhat more unconventional approach. Especially if we take into account what we are used to seeing in an M. Night Shyamalan movie. This is not your typical Cabin in the Woods movie. The setup may be familiar, but once you get a sense of what's actually going on, all those typical tropes are thrown out the window. I'm not kidding when I say this might be the most polite group of home invaders in cinematic history. We were wondering if we can borrow some brown sugar. Imagine if the killers and the strangers took their masks off and tried to have a conversation with the people in the house rather than just trying to kill them for no reason. And that's the thing, this movie is more about conversation and finding common ground. More so than it is about stalking and killing people. We have one side of this equation that fears for the safety of their family. And on the other side, we have a group of people trying to get that family to look past their fear. All in an effort to hopefully see the bigger picture. And I have no respect for those with no respect for logic. It really does create this interesting dynamic where you ask yourself, who's the real villain here? Is there actually a villain in this movie at all? It's a moral conundrum that there really isn't a clear answer to. So as usual, the basic concept that M. Night is presenting to us is pretty great. The questions usually arise with the execution of the things going on around that concept. A lot of M. Night movies have clunky dialogue. And while I will say this isn't the worst I've ever heard from him, some of it, especially early in the movie, came off very unnatural. Do you understand the words that are coming out of my mouth? It did get better as the movie went on, but there's this one scene early in the movie where the dads are basically accusing the intruders of coming after them just because they are gay. And everything that they said in this little exchange just sounded so off to me. It was like they were literally reading from a script and it really took me out of the moment. No, don't like that. Now this could be because of the writing or the acting or the directing, but either way, it left something to be desired. As for the characters, the two dads were fine, I guess. The thing is, they just kind of drop you into the conflict, and then they slowly reveal things about these two characters through flashbacks as the movie goes on. But even so, I really didn't feel like I knew them by the end of the movie, even if the script really wanted me to. And the end of the movie doesn't really work as well if you don't have a clear understanding of who these characters are. That makes sense. I thought the little girl was great in this. Sometimes kid actors can be very annoying, but I really enjoyed her performance. What little of it there was. As for the intruders, I found three of the four to be pretty forgettable. Batista does most of the heavy lifting character-wise, and I think he does a decent job. I've never really been sold on him as the leading man type, and I'm still not, but I still think he does an admirable job here. Even if the hulking nature of his appearance doesn't necessarily match the character he is playing. So, um, what do you do for a living? I lift things up and put them down. I think the highlight of this movie for me is watching these news reports of these end-of-the-world events starting to happen. Not only is it cool visually, but when the characters start to see more and more things happening, this is what makes them question their beliefs. And it creates this black cloud 
hanging over the whole conflict, where the characters and the audience aren't really sure if this is real or something that is being manufactured by these group of strangers. What is real? How do you define real? As I already said, M. Night Shyamalan, of course, is known for his twists at the end of his movies. So much so that as this movie was wrapping up, I was sitting there in the theater saying to myself, what's the catch? What's the little tidbit he's going to tack on to the end of this movie that will either make or break everything that I just watched? Well, in a bit of subversion of expectations, this movie is actually much more straightforward than I was expecting. Surely you can't be serious. I am serious. And don't call me Shirley. When it ended, I was like, okay, I guess that's really the end. I'm gonna go pee now. Now some may say that this is M. Night maturing as a filmmaker and not really relying on gimmicks so much. And that might be true. But in a weird twist of fate, the lack of any kind of bigger revelation left this particular movie with a somewhat predictable and underwhelming finale. <laughs> Whoopie f do. <laughs> hey, I'm impressed. I'm not even saying that it needed a major twist, but I do think it needed something to kind of bring everything home. Instead, the movie just kind of ends, and then I move on with my life. This movie is rated R, by the way, which is a strange choice, considering they pretty much shy away from violence any chance they get. In fact, anytime something violent happens, usually there's a cutaway, so I'm not really sure why it needed to be rated R to begin with. I don't get it. Overall, I'd have to say that Knock at the Cabin didn't blow me away, and it didn't really disappoint me either. In a very rare instance, this feels like the most middle-of-the-pack movie that M. Night Shyamalan has ever made. There are things about this movie that work, and there are things about the movie that don't work. In the end, there were some emotional family elements to it, which will be relatable to some. But throughout most of the movie, I just really didn't feel much while watching it. And I honestly can't see myself ever really having the desire to watch it ever again, so that's why I'm going to give it the careless Sam Gerard. I don't care! Y'all be cool. Right on.